What's up guys, I'm here today with my first DIY of 2018 and also my first speaker build ever, so that's fun. Anyways, there was a lot of planning that went into this and I think it came out really well, so I'm making this video so you can try and replicate it for yourself if you decide to do such things. First thing I did was I opened up SketchUp and I got to modeling. I have found that making a 3D model makes my life a little bit easier because then I kind of have a visual idea of where I'm going with the project. So, in the description I have a link where you can download the SketchUp file that I made for the speaker, and below that, if you don't have SketchUp, there will be a PDF with uh, sizes and pictures of the pieces that you need to build this. So then what I did was, I went outside, got out the table saw, and I started cutting wood. So, I had a whole bunch of cutoffs from when I was making the monitor stand, which, again, this is still the same piece of 2x2 plywood that I used on the monitor stand and the wash stand video, so that's great. And I used some of those scrap bits to make the herringbone pattern that is on the front. So what I did was, I first started cutting them down to a half inch wide so I could make the panel. Now to do that, because they were such thin pieces, I had to hot glue them to another piece of wood so that I wouldn't cut my fingers off, because that would not be fun. Then, I took all those half inch wide pieces and I cut them down into three and a half inch long little mini pieces. Then I took some other scrap wood that I just had laying around and I cut some 45 degree angles in it so I could have some solid blocks that would make my life a little bit easier when I went to make the herringbone pattern. So once that was done, I let the glue dry and I went to work gluing all those little tiny three and a half inch long pieces together to make the herringbone pattern front panel for the speaker. That was easily the most tedious part because there were just so many of them. Anyways, next up was cutting the other five panels to make the speaker. I just took a piece of scrap wood that I had and I cut them to size and then cut the miters. There was nothing really special about how I cut all the other panels. And then once all the panels were cut, I glued them all together with the tried and true tape clamp method. So I just stuck them on some tape, put some glue in the middle, and then wrapped it up and left it to dry. Then I started working on the back panel. Now for the back panel, it had to fit just perfectly inside the sides, otherwise it would leave a gap and cause some air leaks, which would degrade the sound quality a little bit. And because I obviously didn't want that, I measured it very carefully, I cut it very carefully, and then made small adjustments by sanding it. So, once that thing was dry, I took the panel out of the clamps, and I took the tape off of the rest of the box. And then, to make sure I had a nice flat surface for squaring up the front panel, I took a belt sander to it and made sure all the points were even so I could run it along the fence of the table saw to make a nice, even, straight cut. And once I had one side nice and straight, it made it much easier to do all the others. Then, the marathon of sanding began. So, I clamped down the front panel and I basically just wailed on it with a belt sander until it was nice and smooth. Next, I cut up some scraps that I had laying around so that I could actually mount the back panel with screws in case I would need to take it back off. Then I drilled holes in those little mounting scraps and then used them as guides to drill matching holes in the back panel. I then countersunk, countersink? I don't know what it is, countersink the holes on the back panel so that the screws were nice and neat. Once I had done that, I screwed the little mounting points onto the back panel and glued it into the back, making sure that it was sticking out just a little bit so I could sand it flush with the rest of the back. Then I cut the front panel in half and glued it back together again with a piece of walnut trim in the middle just because I thought it looked nice. Once all of that was dry, I trimmed down the front panel again, and then I went back to sanding to make sure everything was nice and even. After that, I sanded the front of the box just a little bit just to, so it would have a nice flat surface for me to glue the front panel onto and then I glued them together. Once the glue for the front panel was dry, I then flipped it over, clamped it to the table with some scrap wood underneath it, and then I got out a one and a half inch hole saw to cut the two holes for the speaker. Now this is actually a little bit too small, so after that I had to use a Dremel to widen it up just a little bit because the holes need to be one and five eighths of an inch. After that, it was more sanding. Now, this time it was finishing and making sure the front was even with the sides. Making sure the front was even with the sides took quite a long time because there was a pretty decent overhang, but once it was done, I think it came out fine. My progression for sanding was 80 to 120 to 220. Once all the sanding was done, I could begin finishing. The finishing you probably guess by now, is the same wax that I use always. To use this wax, you just rub it into the wood, 
you wait 15 minutes, and then you buff it. I used a Dremel, so it was little and it took a little bit of time, but I guess you could use whatever you wanted. Once the finishing was done, it was time to move on to the electronics. So, first thing I did was I took the old wires off of the speakers. Now I actually got these speakers out of my old clock because the clock part stopped working. In the description, I have links to where you can buy pretty much the exact same speakers that I used, or for about the same price, you can get speakers that would probably be a lot better suited to this. So once I had taken the old wires off the speakers, I prepared the new wires and the speakers for soldering. Once the new wires were soldered to the speakers, I screwed them into the enclosure. Then once I was done with that, I soldered the speakers onto the board. Once that was done, I soldered one more pair of wires onto the board that would lead to the power jack on the back panel. Now this amp is just a little $15, 15 watts per channel Bluetooth amplifier board that I found on Amazon. This board doesn't have any buttons on it, which is exactly what I wanted because I didn't want to have any buttons that I would have to move to make them actually usable. As with pretty much everything else in this video, you can find a link to where you can buy the same board that I used in the description. Then once everything is connected to the amplifier, I hot glued it to the enclosure and then pushed the power jack into the back panel. And then all that was left to do was screw on the back panel and test it out. Anyways, that's all for this video. If you did enjoy, please hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment how I can improve future videos, suggest a future video, and as I've said before, I love doing DIYs, so keep that in mind. If you do decide to make this speaker, post a picture to Instagram and tag me, at elmtree.productions, and I'll check it out. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!